The real inspiration for The Long Dark was probably Fallout 3. Uh, I'm a huge Fallout fan. I have been from the very, very beginning of that, um, that franchise. And I, I found myself spending a lot of time wandering like the desolate wasteland, loving the exploration and really not enjoying the combat. <laughs> um, and so I, I found myself, you know, wondering, could you create an experience that would be, you know, like 95% about exploration and discovery and recreating that feeling of, you know, everything, every time you see a building on the horizon, you want to go in there and every time you open a locker, you hope to find something valuable in there. And I found that such a compelling part of the experience. I, I, I just, you know, asked myself, could you really create a game around that idea? My name is Raphael Van Leer. I work at Hinterland Studio where I'm the founder and creative director. I've been making games for, I guess, about 18 years now. I started at Relic Entertainment where I worked on the first Dawn of War and the first Company of Heroes. And I ended up at um, Ubisoft Montreal as the narrative director on Far Cry 3, which was a pretty awesome experience. And then I went back to Relic actually and directed Space Marine. I think every developer um, goes through that sort of almost postpartum process, like every time you finish a game, you're like, oh, you know, what am I doing with my life? Like, is it really worth, you know, kind of putting yourself through this? But I guess I was just at that moment, you know, in my, in my career and, you know, my, my kids were really young at that point. My wife and I were, were really asking ourselves, like, is this kind of what we want to do um, for the next however many years? And, and we concluded that we didn't. Yeah, my wife and I left Vancouver. We set up, you know, in a small community in Vancouver Island. And, and I think that's where kind of Hinterland was born because I felt like I, in a way, had sort of exiled myself a little bit from the mainstream industry that you know left the city and sort of set up in this really small remote community. And a lot of the, you know, what the long dark became, I think was a part of that process, like of sort of understanding what I wanted to do and what I wanted to make and then being inspired by the environment around me. It was really more about that, you know, trying to recreate that Fallout 3 ex experience of exploration, but then also instead of having, you know, the enemies in the combat, which I found was sort of detracted in Fallout 3 from the core experience, um, could you make the environment the obstacle? And so suddenly when you think about things in those terms, you ask yourself, how can I, you know, how can I emphasize the vulnerability of the player, of the player, the character that the player is inhabiting? And then it just becomes about thirst and hunger, fatigue and, and cold. In a way, that's what makes the minute to minute experience of the game compelling. Even if I am walking through a forest looking for my next shelter, I have this sense of the constant depletion of my resources. So I'm, I'm always getting a little bit more hungry as every minute goes by. I'm getting a bit colder, I'm getting a bit more tired, I'm getting a bit more thirsty. And as those needs become kind of more critical, as I'm unable to you know, address them or if I ignore them for too long, they start to kind of slowly chip away at my overall health, which then makes me vulnerable to the myriad other ways in which, you know, the game can kind of take you down. The hundreds of different obstacles, the hundreds of different, like, you know, ways of afflictions or wildlife can get in your way, or a piece of gear, you know, gear that you really need can break because you didn't maintain it. Um, so that, that was really the kind of the core idea was how can we turn the environment into the, not the enemy, but the obstacle. And then how can we put the right pieces in place to surface information to the player so they can make interesting choices, but on many different sort of time scales. So the immediate need of like, oh my gosh, there's a blizzard coming and I have to find shelter to the longer term need. What, how will I survive? you know, three or four days from now, do I have enough food? Should, what should I do? Should I try to go hunting? You know, carry this heavy rifle with me and I only have one round. Will I get lucky enough to find a wolf? And if I do, will I be able to kill it? And then will I be able to survive long enough to, you know, to harvest the meat? Should I rather go and try ice fishing? You know, should I look through houses and hope to find cans of dog food? Like whatever the, the longer term strategy might be. So, so that's kind of how we tried to balance all those things. The Long Dark is ultimately a game about decision making. And what makes every decision feel meaningful is the fact that you might die tomorrow and then you have to start over if you want to keep playing. So it's the permadeath that really adds a lot of kind of, drama is the wrong word, but like meaning to the choices that you have to make. And then another key principle in survival mode was kind of how we wanted the player to learn how to navigate through the world. This idea that we didn't just give you a map that gets automatically populated with information as you go through the world or or already has all the information in it. We, we really wanted to create that sense of being lost in a wilderness that's unfamiliar to you. And so what we've done, what we did was we created, you know, 
various regions that had places that you could learn to recognize, whether it's a strange rock formation or an actual structure or a lake is here, or here's a river, so that you could, you know, if dropped kind of anywhere in the world after a little bit of exploration, provided you've played the game and learned the world, you could kind of orient yourself. You know, it's interesting because I think that feeling of being lost in the wilderness and not immediately knowing where you are is probably one of the most rewarding parts of the game. And whenever a blizzard kind of sweeps in and, and you immediately lose all your sense of orientation, and I mean, it, I've, I know the world probably as well as anyone, um, I still get lost regularly. And that feeling of being lost and that kind of panic that you, that you get from, from that experience is, is extremely rewarding in a strange way. Like it reminds you of how kind of vulnerable you are. And, and I, I, I guess I've, I've always felt proud of the fact that the long dark kind of embraces this idea of being a vulnerability fantasy. So not trying to be another game that makes you feel like a, an ultimate hero that can kind of overcome all odds, but one that kind of takes it down and, and reminds you like the next can of peaches you eat might be the thing, you know, that kills you, right? A lot of players who actually come to the long dark um, self-identifying as non-gamers. So a lot of people who come and say, I, I've never been a gamer, I don't play games, but I encountered your game somehow. Um, and I find it, you know, very cathartic and I find it like meditative and I find it to be something more than a game for me. Not to get too personal, but we, ha we have players who have, you know, suffered loss and for them they found the escaping into the wilderness of the long dark to be sort of, a, a, again, a cathartic kind of meditative thing. We've had people who've struggled with substance abuse that have contacted us to say, you know, I was really struggling with this issue and um, really your game kind of gave me some kind of an anchor that I could escape into. So that that's, as a developer, that's probably the most rewarding thing that we hear and, and, and the ways in which our, our game can um, be more than a game, I guess. In survival mode particularly, we've resisted the temptation to put other characters in there, even though I think a lot of players would like to see that. I think that it's rare in our like super connected world and, you know, working in, in entertainment and technology and being, you know, uh, in front of a community, it's very rare to feel alone, you know, um, in a good way. <laughs> and I mean, we can often feel isolated, but not alone. And, um, and I do think that that is something that the long dark can do for people that's kind of an unexpected outcome that, you know, from a gameplay perspective, the realization is that you're vulnerable and everything here can kill you. And there's that sense of wanting to triumph against the odds and the feeling of elation, you know, that comes from surviving one more day and seeing this, the next sunset. But then there's the other aspect I think that is less about the, the character and the survivor in the game and more about the player, which is it's a it's can be an hour or two, you know, away from the noise of the world, you know, where you just hear the crunching of the snow under your feet and the wind in the trees and, you know, a wolf howling hopefully in the distance. <laughs> and um, and I think that there there are not a lot of opportunities in our world right now for that kind of quiet. <laughs>